So the decision to call uh, by the court to call the mandate a tax may have created an unexpected problem. Jack Abramoff says the court has opened up an opportunity for Congress to tax Americans on inactivity. He says the president could change the way Congress looks at new laws. Abramoff is a former Washington lobbyist. He's the author of Capital Punishment, referring to a little bit of time he spent in jail, three years in a federal prison. Is that correct? A little bit more, for yeah. The scandal. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us this thanks morning. You have an me. interesting article in which you lay out what you see are the implications of this new health care law and really what the Supreme Court decided. Explain that to us. Well, I, I try to look at it from the point of view of, of a lobbyist, even though I'm not currently You're a, lobbyist. From being a lobbyist. I'm, I'm not barred, but uh, it'd be a little foolhardy to sort of jump back into the pool for me. And uh, I try to look at it in terms of how I know the lobbying world thinks, looking for opportunities. I mean, basically, you have up to 30,000 people sitting in Washington looking at legislation, looking for loopholes, looking for things that are possible. And what happened, I think, with the decision in part was that they opened up a new vista for lobbyists to look at government activity in behalf of clients, particularly clients who want to use the government as a bludgeon against competition and Give things like examples. that. Give us examples. Walk well, us through. For example, so you're a lobbyist mm -hmm. sitting in your office, the Supreme Court ruling comes down, and you say, ah, the first call I'm going to make is? Well, I would. Perhaps if I represented a company that made solar panels, I would call them and say, listen, I, we have an opening now. It will be tough, by the way, but certainly with the Republicans adverse to any kind of movement like this. But I would say, why don't we uh, work to say that our particular solar panel, the uh, composition of it, is something that is certainly economically and environmentally sufficient. Let's say that if you don't have this solar panel in certain regions to start, you will get a penalty. You will get a tax. I guess it's uh, the big question is, is this a penalty or is this a tax? We will tax you for your inactivity. Activity. Uh, basically, I think lobbyists, and I know this, I've actually talked to a number of them, they're looking for opportunities now. Uh, they're not easy opportunities, but they're looking for a new way to, in essence, involve the government in our lives, and it's very disturbing. How, how, much, of, go ahead. No, so how much of a long shot is that? With health care, I mean, it's such a high-stakes thing. There's a big buy-in. There's a public policy reason for wanting to do this. Uh, solar panels is a bit different. I see theoretically how I see theoretically how that makes sense, but in yeah. practice, how likely is it? Well, that? I, I think what one has to remember is that a lot of what lobbyists do is so completely under the radar. Uh, you're not 99 percent of any lobbying fight is not going to surface to where it even makes it to any kind of show on TV. And so lobbyists are looking for opportunities to reformulate something so that the members who are supporting them have a basis on which to move forward. And this gives them another basis Margaret, to do that. But what's not under the radar is taxing, right? right. And so what conservatives say is the genius of this decision is that while they've made it easier to tax, politically it's almost impossible to pass taxes. Right. And, but then the genius of, of the court's decision supposedly is in the constraining of the Commerce Clause so that it's allowed for a narrowing of government's influence in commerce. And while it has allowed for taxing uh, maybe to be easier, politically that's so difficult to get across that in fact maybe there is a net conservative gain from this ruling. What yeah, lobbyist I, I, is going to go in and say, I have a great strategy, tax people more. They love that. No, I, I don't think that that lobbyists will frame it as taxes any more than the administration wants to frame it as taxes politically. Everybody understands that stepping on the tax rail is death. Uh, lobbyists certainly understand that as well. But what it gives them is a legal framework in which to operate now. Uh, the discussion often with the lobbyists who go into a congressman and say, here's what I want, here's what I'm trying to achieve for my client. The congressman at the staff is prescient and understands what's going on. Uh, they will say, well, that can't work because of the following objections. One of the big objections, indeed, is constantly that the government can't attack inactivity. Now the government can. And so that's, that's what opens up a new vista. Jack, I have to say, of all the articles, all the arguments I've read about the fallout from the Roberts decision, this is the least convincing one I've seen. <laughs> I mean, there is no politician that is going to propose putting a tax on some product. The health care law was completely unique in that health care economics require for insurance to work that everyone get in the pool. And that is the reason we had either the mandate, penalty, or tax, whatever you want to call it, is because the market for health care was completely unique. There is literally no other market in the country, whether it's solar panels or these other things you mentioned, Acme diversity well, training seminars or loafers. Were, were Those were hyperbolic things examples, but, but I, th I think what I'm trying to, the could, point I'm trying to make could, is... What argument would you make well, for, for, for forcing Americans, in, as you say in your piece, that they have to enroll in Acme diversity training seminars? What, what would the argument Argument that you, no, what obviously, would you tell obviously, obviously by its very title, it was it was being uh, a bit tongue in cheek uh, in the article. I think the thing is that obviously you all naturally don't think like lobbyists do, and, and <laughs> thank God, I mean uh, that you don't. But unfortunately yeah. for me, I can't quite expel this from my brain in terms of how <laughs> lobbyists operate within the system. It is not a matter of going in there and saying, let us create a new tax. Nobody's ever going to say that. And by the way, they're not saying it with this. I don't think anybody. 
I don't remember, at least in the discussion, let's put a new tax on the American people. Let's create 20. In fact, there are 20 taxes within the health care bill. The mandate is possibly only one of them. Nobody went in there saying, let's make a new tax, and they wouldn't do it in this case either. What I'm saying is what they've opened up is a new way to approach how the government can, in fact, be involved with inactivity. And that's that's the biggest thing I here. I just don't buy it. I don't buy it. And it seems like part of a broader conversation about and a broader attempt to beat up on the Roberts decision to make it seem as if this is leading us on some downward government spiral towards more intervention, towards more taxes, towards more bureaucracy, when in fact I don't think it's going to do any of that. It's, I mean, I haven't heard one, and I, I agree with you, I can't think of one concrete example where it's possible that government that the government would intervene in, in tax Well, nobody thought, by the way, before the Roberts decision that it was possible that a Supreme Court justice, certainly not a conservative, would write an opinion that it, the government should in fact have a penalty or a tax toward inactivity. I mean, this was a new notion as well, and I'm, I know that it's possible that we aren't thinking of something today that may be happening, yeah, but I can I assure you that in the minds in Washington right now, percolating are these thoughts. In fact, I've talked to a number of them. Obviously, the examples I used were hyperbolic. When you start seeing fun, some real but, examples, um, come back and talk to us about them. Okay, I'll come back. <laughs> no, seriously, I really want to know, like, who's, who's pitching this? Right, well, we'll keep an eye on it. It's nice to have you. We appreciate <laughs> it. Thank right. you. Coming up this morning... I'm